And we're ready to talk week 14 NFL on a Saturday. Uh, we're probably getting ready to hit halftime of those college football championship games today, uh, which I uh, can't wait to talk more about that on uh, Sunday. We'll be doing a show on Sunday here on ProLine TV. Uh, trying to see if I can fix it so we could do it live, but if not, then we'll uh, have a video ready for you so you can uh, let uh, we can let you know exactly how uh, we feel about the brackets, and we'll talk more about that all week. We'll have our Playbook ATS show on Wednesday. Mark won't be there again. That's because he's working on his college football bowl uh, uh, newsletter, which is going to be pretty uh, awesome, as always. Can't wait to talk about that when he's all when he's all said and done. Uh, I'd be surprised if he's finished uh, this week, week with that one. That's a big, that's a big heavy duty load he's got, Jim. The uh, the bowl newsletter. I, I, it's a lot. Of, there's a lot of work involved in that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome information. You don't, wanna, you don't want to pick your bowl games without check, taking a look at that. We'll talk more about that, of course, later in the week. And of course, NFL will be into week 15. Jim and I will wrap up week 14 or most of the games on week 14 on Monday. So look back. For that, but we're here to talk. Week 14 is only one game in the books, of course, and that was on Thursday night. Let's take a look at uh, the games coming up. We're going to obviously update the latest injury news, and then also uh, Jim will give you his uh, top plays uh, that he likes for this week. Uh, let's just go with the uh, chronological uh, starts, J uh, Jim. Uh, Carolina's at Philly. Philly is a big favorite, 13 and a half. The line has gone up. Carolina's now at 550, basically. And again, all these lines are subjective to what book uh, you're, you're, you're working with. But they're about five, uh, excuse me, plus 550. They're two and two straight up, 4 0 against the spread in their last four, including losing the three each to Kansas City and Tampa Bay. They've also covered 10 straight as dogs of five or more when they take on an opponent off a uh, off of a straight up upset win, and they're one and zero in that spot this year. The Eagles are red hot, though. They're right now playing one of the best teams in football. They won eight straight. They've covered six out of eight. But this is also Jim considered a sandwich game because they had the big upset last week, and now next week they're playing a big game in state against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The, there's no question. The way you look at this game, we already know who the better team is. We already know who would be the winner if both teams were playing 100% intensity, focus, everything else, it's not about that. It's about the number. And it's, and it's about the narrative that you can develop on the game. And Carolina is, these, these people are playing not for a playoff spot, not for a Super Bowl spot. They're playing for jobs. They, nobody wants to lose their job in the offseason. Nobody wants to come back and not have a job in the NFL and want to be playing at the bagging groceries at the grocery store next year. So Philadelphia has really nothing to prove here except they want to win, play well. However, can you just see going into the fourth quarter and Philadelphia is up, say, 21 to 3? And can you see a backdoor cover here? Can you see Philadelphia resting players, pulling players, uh, not – going intensely after the after more scoring and because people get hurt in games that don't matter and I mean this does matter but it's not that kind of a game but next week it is and next week's a big game and there's g big games coming down the road there's only five games left so uh, you're and everybody knows that Philadelphia and Detroit are arguably the best two teams in the NFC You'll get an argument from each side. I say it's Detroit if healthy. They're not healthy at the moment. So right now it would be Philadelphia. You got a pick? They are, hmm? Pardon? You got a pick? In, this, in what game? In this game. Yeah, of course. I do. do like? I, took th I took 13. And I agree with you. And I think it's uh, I, I, I hear what you're saying as far as the back door. I don't, I don't know. I'm not so sure that's to be the case in this one. I think Carolina's been playing some pretty good football, and I suspect that they cover that game fairly. In other words, I think it's going to be a game where I can see it under 13 most of the game. So I, I'm going to I'm going to agree with you. But uh, it may, it, is that where you're looking at it as as like? Not necessarily saying it's going to be a backdoor, but you think it, it that is definitely a possibility on your on your on your side. It's a it's a definite possibility you get a backdoor. You also could get a team 
where Philadelphia doesn't come focused. Yeah. And and it, the game is close the whole way. That is yeah. possible. I, so it gives you. I think you have two chances of covering yep. the number. Yeah, because you look at this and you would think, okay, well, if this was four weeks ago before Carolina started playing their best football of the season, then what the heck would the line be then? Eighteen. I mean, this is a pretty big line considering how well Carolina has been playing the last month. Well, you would probably be. You probably. I don't know about eighteen, but you'd probably be looking at fourteen. The, the I know, I extra point, right? You know, you'd, you'd be definitely looking at a bigger, a slightly bigger number. You go, yeah. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to see too many 18s in this, no, in no. this league. No, but. I think this is uh, showing a lot of disrespect for the way Carolina has been playing lately. So, well, uh, all right, yeah. let's move on. We got a lot of games to cover. Las Vegas, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is a six and a half point favorite. That line's been staying there all week. Las Vegas, two twenty on the money line, coming off the crazy loss to Kansas City. But, you know, I look at that situation, I don't know about you, Jim, but when you have a situation like that, when the team is really not playing for anything, when they're playing pretty poorly, then they actually go out and play as good as they could possibly play and still lose in a division game. Now you're in a way that they lost. Now you're going in a non-conference game. It's back to playing a game that doesn't mean anything. There's no rival. I just think I think I kind of think they shot their wad, in other words. Uh, with that loss against Kansas City, and I see Tampa Bay after having to really fight hard for that win against Carolina, I, I think they'll uh, they'll be in a little bit better shape this week. There's ways of looking at this, and, and you said a game that doesn't mean anything. That's not true. Uh, the Raiders, the, the Raiders. You got to remember, 50 guys on a team. They're all looking for jobs. They all know that there's going to be quarterback changes here and there. There's going to be player changes. They're going to be, they may be out of a job next year. And that's a big deal. These are football players that want to play football. The Raiders are going to come to play because they want to be, have a job next year. And, well, and, and that means the, you're saying every team, every week, even no matter how bad they are, they're going to come to play. It, except for one thing. If the coaching, if the management have decided to tank, they're going to make it more difficult for the players. The players are not going to tank. That is not going what to What about if they've given up on their coach? you, you got to remember something. Uh, next year, somebody is... <laughs> Someone gonna, else is going to be coaching the Raiders next year. This going to have... They, these have to, guys have to find a job next year. Sure. Yeah. So if they don't have a contract, a no cut contract or a guaranteed contract, they're going to have to find a job next year. So they have to impress when they go out there. If you're a football player that shows up and doesn't, and, and the, your opposition player that's across from you dominates you the whole game, the coaching people look at the film and they say, "I don't know if I can trust that guy." Oh, I no, understand they, that, but the problem is, is you've got to, you know, like when you look at Tampa Bay, you've got 53 guys that know the game is important, all of them. On the other side, you've got 30 guys that know they've got to fight for a job. The others, they don't like the coach. They're, they're giving up on the The others, they've got a big contract. It doesn't matter. That's why you get into situations that you just don't know whether a team is going to fully come together that week when they're playing so poorly that season against the other team that everybody knows they have to play hard. I can't argue with that at all. But And that's why you know who the favorite is six and a half yeah. point favorite 46 and a half or 46 yeah. is, is the, is the total. I think like the over I, in this one, right? I think I most likely, I think the game's going to go over the total. I, okay. Right now you're, you're looking at 46, but there has the, you know, some of these lines have moved. You're talking about now it's Saturday. Some of these numbers have moved. You're not always getting the best number when you bet this late. Uh, by the way, Jacoby Myers is questionable, but looking like he's going to play, and that's big because he's their number one receiver right now. But the Raiders look like they're still going to be without Madison. He's questionable, but I don't know if he's looking that good. Samir White also out again. They've lost eight straight to three and five ATS in those eight. And, of course, Tampa Bay, if Atlanta loses to Minnesota, and that's our next game, and Tampa Bay beats uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, Tampa Bay will be in first place in the NFC South. That. I, I have already I've already bet Penn Tampa Bay to to beat to win the division, even though they have been behind Atlanta. I don't, I don't like the way Atlanta is playing. I'm not I'm not comfortable with the way Cousins looks. 
uh, last year, or last week, he was bad. I'm not, there's, I feel there's some kind of injury going on with him that's not been disclosed. Um, and that's why I think in Tampa Bay with, with uh, Baker Mayfield, they've been playing, he's been playing like a warrior. He, he's been playing at a MVP level. And um, that's why I think Tampa Bay is going to show up. I think the Raiders will show up. I, I like the way McConnell fit, fit, oh, O'Donnell, or can't remember his name. O'Connell. <laughs> finished, Aiden O'Connell. Yeah, yeah. O'Con- Aiden O'Connell finished the game last week against the uh, the Chiefs. Yep. Uh, he, he looked. I mean, his, his arm looked really good. He was hitting hitting some really good passes and it's putting the putting it right on the player. And anticipating the player was he was in the game. He did he did some good things. And I think uh, with his background, he's got he's got some potential. I think they're going to come to play. That's why I like the game over. In this game over here, Minnesota, I could only play Minnesota minus the six because I just don't know how good the Falcons are with Cousins playing. If he plays like he did last week, this is going to be a 20-point victory. Well, again, that is all going to depend, and it probably you – know, look, if it wasn't for the whole I'm playing against my former team deal, I would feel a lot better in taking Minnesota – I just feel like in these circumstances, the player rises to the occasion against his former team. Um, and if the team around Cousins likes them, likes Cousins as much, they're going to rally around him as well. But the problem is Minnesota's got such a good defense, and you were talking about Kirk Cousins, maybe something's wrong with him. I did speak to Kevin Knight from the Falcoholic. who does a great job covering the Falcons. And he just said, look, this has been going on since week one. It's not an injury. The fact is he's old. His arm is old. He is going to have problems, and he's had problems all season when he can't step up in the pocket, when there's pressure on him. And these are the types of teams, the Chargers, the Vikings. And and Minnesota does throw a lot of pressure at the quarterback. So these are the types of teams that he would need. He is old. He doesn't doesn't move well. The arm isn't that great. It all leans to me that this is late in the season. There's a lot of fatigue. And the older you are, the worse the fatigue is. Uh, by the way, uh, Minnesota is just one in seven against the spread. They're last eight as a home favorite, one and two in that spot this year. So that's also important to keep an eye on. And it's funny, last uh, last week, uh, this is just this happens all the time. Uh, when you were talking last week about because you picked the Chargers against Atlanta, and you said one of the reasons is, and Atlanta was coming off the bye. You said, oh, you know, Falcons they can't pressure anybody. Uh, you know, they just got no, and it's true. Falcons uh, press rush for the last two years or so. They were a little bit little better last year, uh, but that defensive coordinator's gone. He's now with uh, Jacksonville, I believe. And uh, by the and so, uh, but Atlanta has done nothing. And so, I think they came into the game with like five sacks on the year. Well, Jim brought this up last week, and then they had five sacks in the game. I was just laughing every time they had a sack against Herbert because I'm going, I just hear Jim ringing in my ear about how they got no pass rush. And it's like, of course, just just as you just as you point out something that's true, the, the other team just like, you know, goes out and does the opposite and doubles their sack total. But can of they course. do it two weeks in a row? You know, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Well, and this this is a this is a very good team to deal well with Minnesota. I mean, they yeah. have a hell of a record that you know, this is one of the teams that, that could go a long way in the playoffs. This, this is no cupcake team to play. So I, I, everything about it is the Vikings yeah, are, no, are the yeah. winner. The only thing is I am worried about that spread. I mean, that uh, trend history. They're just not good. They're similar to Houston, we're going to talk about uh, next week. They are just not a good home favorite. A uh, couple of key injury notes. The other game, Tampa Bay, Bucky Irving, questionable, may not play. But of course, they've got White, and we know how good he is. I think they'll be okay. Tucker's also a very good young number three. So I don't think that'd be a big deal against the Raiders. But with Minnesota, this is important. Stephon Gilmore, of course, we know how good he's been his, his entire career. Uh, he's been obviously one of Minnesota's top two corners this year. He's out. So he had an issue. Uh, I, I forget. I think it might have been his hamstring, but he had an issue. Uh, I believe it might have been in the Arizona game last week. So he's out. He's not playing this week. So that's a break for Atlanta. And I don't have Gilmore out there. And it also looks like Reichard, uh, the place kicker for uh, Minnesota, might return 
this week, even though the guy who replaced him is actually little a little side note. There has been rumors all week that they're going to see that uh, Pickens um, per, get into the court, the quarterback back of quarterback come in for you know, it for for Atlanta. Oh, you mean Penix? Yeah, okay, well, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. yeah, I'm losing. I mean, I'm hey, losing you, you got to think if, if he gets off to a slow start, or if they're trailing big at halftime. He has, I mean, he has talent, to, he, but he has absolutely no experience at the NFL level. But he has right. talent. Uh, next up, uh, we have New Orleans and the Giants, and the Saints are a five and a half point favorite. But another team that is not good in this role. They're just one seven and one in their last nine as a road favorite. 0-1 oh, in that spot this year. Giants, though, have lost seven straight, straight-up ATS. Malik Neighbors may not play in this game. Taysom Hill, he looks like he's done for maybe the well, he's season. Done. New Orleans he, he's done. He's out, he's out for the season, yeah. So uh, that's a little bit of a blow for a team that can use all the weapons they can get. This is still this is still a better team. They got they got the running game. They got Kamara. They get, they get Carr. They can, they can go in there and win this game. And the Giants, I mean, nobody's going to argue with this. The most obvious team that decided to tank about three weeks ago was the Giants when they got rid of their number one quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. And then they, they then they don't go to their backup quarterback. They go to their number three, and there was a you and cry from the fan base and everything. And and now they got, they've gone to the the backup quarterback. Uh, luck and and uh, yeah, he's he actually. Might, I think Luck might actually be better though than Devito. So, but Devito well, he, he he is better than Devito, and that's why he was number two on the on the on the roster. But uh, for some reason, Dayball didn't do that. He went yeah. to the three. I I believe the Giants are are really the only obvious tanking, tanking team out team, there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 it worked against them though because now uh, Devito's hurt. So luck, so luck has to play. So uh, nothing they can do about it. Uh, look, the Giants are going to win sooner or later. Uh, well, I don't know whether they do it this week. But keep this in mind regarding the point spread. Uh, and that is the fact that if you uh, have failed yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, to purchase uh, the weekly newsletter uh, from uh, Mark Lawrence, the Playbook Newsletter. The awesome angle of the week is against the New Orleans Saints uh, because it says you play against any NFL road favorite in game seven out, who won seven or more games last year, if they allow, get this one. This is this is a typical Mark, uh, a geeky, awesome, uh, inside <laughs> the stats angle. If they allow 4.6 yards or more per rush, and they are facing a, one, a .166 or fewer foe. So if you do that and you play against them, you are winning at a 92% clip. 12 and and one, and, and you can't you cannot argue with that is an amazing stat if you can <laughs> apply it to this current situation yeah. yes all right jacksonville and tennessee not much to talk about here tennessee's a three-point favorite trevor lawrence is out keep in mind even though jacksonville's lost five straight they're four one and one against the spread in their last six so they're actually not giving up they're actually playing hard down the stretch they just don't know how to win a football game very often and and there, this is a this is a team that's going to have a lot of changes. That coaching staff is going to all go. Uh, by, by the way, Tennessee three and eight against the spread. Their last eleven as a home favorite. Zero oh, and three in that role this year. So this is yeah. not. A, I actually like uh, Jacksonville on the spot. I wouldn't mind taking the money line at plus one fifty, plus one fifty five. And you know what? Show some heart after what happened last week to Trevor Lawrence. You know what? Why don't you give him a game ball or something like that and rally around him and win a football game this week? Uh, I'm not sure that they have the talent to do that, but Tennessee is no uh, no great. They're no bar. They're no. They're no bar. It's, it's you know it's a it's a game that I look at it and say I don't know <laughs> who's watching that one. I, who's uh, watching it? And I really don't want to have my money on it. Yeah, uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh to six and a half point favorite. Uh, the home team in this series, eleven one and one straight up, eleven and two against the spread since 2018 in the regular season only. Uh, so Pittsburgh now will look to keep that going. They've won six out of seven straight up ATS overall. Pittsburgh, of course, is looking for revenge after Cleveland beat them in that snow game just a couple of weeks ago, 24 to 19. It's also a short week for Cleveland. They had to go to the West Coast and they got a short week back to Pittsburgh. So they're dealing with that. 
Uh, Pickens, meanwhile, George Pickens is dealing with a hamstring injury from practice. So keep an eye on that. He's been a big, big weapon for Russell Wilson. And we know how important he is in that Pittsburgh offense. Next up for Pittsburgh, Philadelphia on the road, Baltimore on the road on a Saturday, and Kansas City at home on a Wednesday. Those are their next three games. So rough. That's rough. That's yeah. rough. But, but this so is to take care of business this week. This this is a division game. It is. And faced with what the tough card that they have coming up, you don't want to start to slip. And now the revenge, uh, the focus is going to be there because that's Tomlin. That's who Tomlin is. And the coaching, I mean, I, I don't dis I don't dislike Stefanski. I think he he's been playing with uh, coaching with one arm tied behind his back because of the the ownership haslam in, in in Cleveland. I think it's a mess. The decisions that that have taken place with Watson and all the other stuff. Jameis Winston, God bless him. He knows how to score for both teams. He is he's perfect. I mean, he's going to throw a couple pick sixes. He's going to throw a lot of he, he touchdown passes for for his own team. Uh, and and Russ looks like maybe he can cook. Now he's not playing against the high school defense here like he did last week against. Cincinnati because you know Cleveland can, but Bo Nix looked them up, and of course Winston did help. Jets and Miami. By the way, that so my my pick in that game is really I like the over. Okay, Pittsburgh Cleveland over. Okay, what's the number? Uh, I'm looking at which. Where is it? Uh, 43, 43 and a half. 44, I guess. It yeah. depends on what book you look at. It's it's in that range. And that actually is my top pick of the week, taking Pittsburgh. I like everything about it. I like the revenge. I like the short I, week. I like the, the importance of the game. I um, would like that. I like that side as well, but I, I, I favor the over a little bit more. All right. Jets in Miami. Miami's a six-point favorite. Finally, the Jets are not getting a number break. Uh, not sure what the injuries have to do with it. Probably nothing. But keep in mind this. Brees Hall has now been ruled out for the Jets. Sauce Gardner is doubtful exactly. for the Jets. Yeah, probably out. That usually that means. And they got three offensive linemen that are questionable, all starters. Um, so uh, this is one of those games that you just kind of feel, especially last week, was like the final nail in their in their mental heads that they thought they actually could win out and get back. At, get that. Get out of here. Leave. <laughs> leave and i think that's what we're going to get this week everybody realizes it's over stop the nonsense you, Miami, you know the, oh. the amazing thing greg is is how much how, how much money gets bet on the jets every week the i don't people, there's so it. many people that just love pain i don't they, understand they, it it's unreal yeah so maybe, maybe this week now that nobody's putting money on them maybe <laughs> maybe they'll they'll screw those people uh yeah. but yeah how can you not like miami this week uh, you got, you got to like Miami in the game. That's the only, yeah. only side. You could, and you could. Yeah, I, I would favor. I favor Miami more than the total. I think. I, I'm not sure what you're going to get out of the Jets. The uh, Jets are one and eight straight up ATS as nine. Zero oh and three straight up ATS as dogs this year. Miami three and zero oh straight up ATS versus the Jets in their last three by a 75 to 19 margin, and Miami is nine and one against the spread versus a division opponent off back-to-back straight-up losses, and they're 1-0 in that spot this year. Good news for Miami, Bradley Chubb is getting close to playing. Probably not going to play this week, but he's getting really close, and they really do need Bradley Chubb. Matter of fact, I was talking to my, my Miami insider, Jason Sarney from Athlon Sports. Uh, we did the interview on Friday. Uh, and that was like a, a like an advanced interview because I was doing it for this week because we're going to have that matchup with Houston. Anyway, uh, so that's going to be available next week. And he told me, he says, look, Bradley Chubb is not going to come back unless Miami is like, like he's close. But if they say lose to the Jets somehow, they're, they're probably just going to say, forget it. Just don't worry about it. We're not going to make the playoffs. Don't rush him back. So keep that in mind, too. We're probably only going to see Bradley Chubb as long as Miami is still in the playoff hunt. Okay, now we're going to go to those 4 o'clock games. We're done with all the early games, and you have a big one out west, Seattle and Arizona. Arizona is a three-point favorite in this one. Uh, they are uh, starting to struggle a little bit. They had that game last week against Minnesota, and they let it slip away. Seattle, meanwhile, is actually uh, the opposite. Ever since their win, matter of fact, one of their wins in this streak was against Arizona. 
They are 3-0, straight up ATS, last three, since their buy. So since the buy, they're starting to click again. Keep in mind, too, a lot of that has to do with them getting healthy. They got their right tackle back healthy since the buy. Uh, inter- uh, it's amazing how that kind of stuff happens, right, Jim? When you start to get a little healthy. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> all of those games that they just won in the last three have all been as dogs. So they're looking for a fourth straight upset win when they take on Arizona on the road. I like Seattle on this one, and I'm going to tell you why. It has only to do with one thing and one thing only. I do this all the time, and it's, and I'm usually in, the, in that percentile, uh, percentage that it's uh, it's worth it for me to do it. Because Seattle's beaten Arizona six straight times. They just beat them a couple of weeks ago, and they're the dog. So I just love taking those teams that dominate the other team, just beat them a few weeks ago, and you're still going to – I'm the dog? All right. Give me some points. So that's why I'm taking Seattle. But this is a very important game for Arizona, as we all know, Jim, because if they lose this one, they're probably not catching Seattle. Well, they, they, they wouldn't because they, they, the, all the tiebreakers are going to go against them with two, two losses. This is a big revenge game for Seattle. I am not really going to say that I love the Cardinals, but if, I will say this. The threes – you might be seeing a three out there somewhere, but 90% of the books have two and a half. Okay. And that is a that is a big distinction. So if you can lay two and a half, it's a whole lot better than laying three. Now you do have an inj- you do have the revenge situation, and I know the dominance and all that stuff, but there is a revenge situation. It's recency, uh they recently and they played a damn good game at Minnesota last week, even though they lost the game because of some turnovers. And Darnold came in and got red hot at the end of the game. This is a very, very, very important game for both of these teams. But the pros out here, and I'm not speaking for me in this because I didn't really fall in love with this until I started seeing what they're doing. So if I followed these people that are considered sharps and pros and they usually win, they are all over the Cardinals. But there's a there's a buyback on the other side as well. Otherwise, this number would have gotten higher. It hasn't. Huh. So there's there's pros and joes in this game. And I favor the Cardinals because I would follow some of the people that I know that are playing it. I can't make a big case for it because I can make a case for both sides. But Murray's playing well. Gannon's doing a hell of a job coaching this team. Their defense is much better than people credit. You got yep. Connor in the backfield. They've been able to run the ball. This is a tough game. Yeah. This is a very tough game. They are favoring favoring the Cardinals. I'll follow them a little bit in this game. And uh, let's keep this in mind too that even though uh, and Seattle- and by the way, let me say also say this. Uh, let me where the hell did it go? It's forty four and a half. Most of and this one I do have a little bit of insight. I personally favor the under in this game. Oh, okay. So that is going to be one of your plays then? Yes, it's our, I've already bet it. Yes. Okay, so you've got the under. Yes. And that was... Big What's the number? 44 and a half. You could, it, there's different numbers. I mean, we're talking about Saturday. It's been okay. numbers the whole week. And you could have gotten 45, but right now that's what I'm looking at. All right, and uh, if, uh, keep this in mind too. This is important that even because you, you hit it on the head that this is also a very big game for Seattle, because even though they have everything controlling everything with a win, two games up, three games in the, because of the tiebreaker, the fact is is that if Arizona wins the game, they now basically get the tiebreaker split. Everybody's even, and okay, start from scratch. So start from scratch though becomes an issue for Seattle the next couple of weeks. Because their next two games are at home against Green Bay and Minnesota, while Arizona's next two games are against New England and at Carolina. So just like that, the schedule then goes in Arizona's favor. So it's just as equally, you could say, a big game for Seattle, too. because And the momentum just goes in Arizona's favor from beating Seattle on Sunday. So, um, yeah. Um, and we could see both, teams, both of these teams in the playoffs, too. You know, you've got Tampa Bay – on the outs and Arizona potentially on the outs because of where they are right now behind Atlanta and Seattle. But Washington's that team that just has to keep playing. And uh, if they don't, if Washington slips up a little, then 
the, 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 the NFC West or NFC South second place team might have a shot to sneak into the playoffs if they keep winning. If, if you, if you continue to see the Niners and the Rams fail, uh, yeah, there's going to be a wild, could be a wild card and the division winner move on into the playoffs. And, yes. and let's talk about the Niners because I know you've liked the Chicago Bears all week. Uh, they are getting three in this spot. So that line has really fell uh, from early. You got them at what? Four and a half. Okay. So now they're down to three. Uh, now there are some, look, we knew going before going into last week's San Francisco game, before before they were playing the, Bull, the Bills, that they were, there were injuries on San Francisco. Well, now they come out of that game, and now they're dealing without their top two running backs, McCaffrey out for the year, Mason out. They're also not going to have Trent Williams in the game, who only happens to be the best left, left tackle in football. And it looks like Bose is not playing. So they were already without Ayuk. Uh, this is just crazy, the amount of players that San Francisco will not have available. Keep in mind, Chicago may be without their top two running backs. Uh, Rashawn Johnson's out. DeAndre Swift is iffy. And also DJ Moore is dealing with a little bit of an injury. Uh, he is the number two receiver. Keenan Allen should be okay. He was on the injury report earlier this week. Chicago's lost six straight, but uh, they have lost three by a total of just seven points. Um, and this is the one thing that sticks out, though. They are 11-22-1 in their last 34 as road dogs. So that's not been a good spot for them. San Francisco dropped three straight, straight, uh, straight up and against the spread in their last three, including their last two by a 73 to 20 margin. You have the coach bump here, the new coach bump that has been consistently good throughout the league. Uh, they fired at Beberflus, I mean, absolutely disastrous head coach. And now they have a coach, you got the number one draft choice who has all the talent in the world, but he's got to make a little bit, he's got to make some better decisions. The fiasco at the end of that game last week was the coach and the quarterback. They both should have made better decisions at the end of the game. They could have easily won the game. I, I, I like the Bears, but really uh, most of my uh, reasons for betting this game on the Bears is that they have enough talent to play a good solid game, new coach bump, wanting to impress the new coach. But the reason really is the Niners – you got to stick a fork in them. They yeah. have so much problem. And, you know, this is that one of that traditional thing we talk about, the the Super Bowl loser having a bad year. And, boy, I'm telling you, they're having a bad year. It is incredible. It's just – it's um, I mean, unless you're Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady who loses a Super Bowl, it's like every other team that loses a Super Bowl that doesn't have, like, a god on their team, just – they just have a <laughs> terrible year. It's just incredible. All right, so there's one more 4 o'clock game on Sunday, and it's a big one, Buffalo at the L.A. Rams. And, and you and I are going to disagree on this one because I got the Bills. That's my second choice of the week. They're down now to three and a half on the point spread. That's gone down uh, about a point or so, right, since the beginning it's, of the it's, week? It, yeah, we could have gotten a five. Yeah, in well, in, in, I in the wise guy contest, I took them, so I might be given five and a half for all I know. Um, <laughs> and the Rams are plus 155 on the money line. Uh, so yeah, this is a big game for the Rams. If they lose this I, one, they're I could much easily done. I could easily make a case for both sides in this game. But I mean, when you look at the Rams' last two home games against Miami and Philadelphia, two pretty good teams, yep. they look disgraceful. Yep. And that was at home, and and they have not lived up to expectations. They're go they're going to have to run the ball against Buffalo to keep Josh Allen on the sidelines because he is a dynamic player and one of the best in the league. Stafford's uh, got a little ankle issue, but if he can get stand up back there with the wide receivers and get a running game, this can be a very... The thing about this is, in, in my mind, last week Buffalo won the game. They won the division, the AFC East division. They clinched it for the fifth straight time. They have some celebration with that because they know exactly where they are. And the motivation that they have is they're trying to catch and and win the best record with Kansas City. Now, Kansas City, let's look at the other side of that. Kansas City is not going to be easy to catch because they're getting some players back, and it's big. Well, so here they're crossing the country after playing in the snow, playing the Niners in the snow, beating them up pretty good. Now they go to go out to the Rams on the West Coast, and the Rams are desperate. 
they they lose this game, they're toast. Put a fork in them. And, and they have to win this game. Now, they just have not been playing good enough to be too inspired by them. But the, you put the whole situation together. They're definitely worth a shot at the right number. This number at three and a half is a little bit less enticing than taking it at four and a half or five. But this is what you deal with when you play late, like this after moves have been made. But yeah, uh, that, uh, that's why, I, I, and I know the number was a little bit higher, but I'm, I, I was looking at those two games you are just talking about, Philly and Miami, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, Buffalo knows how important these games are. I know they got Detroit next week, but this is why. I mean, you, you can't afford to lose here this week. If you do, you might be screwing your chances for a number one seed, and then you have to go to Kansas City, and they know what that's like. They want that home game. I believe that that's what they want. Now we'll find out if that's the case. We'll see. Uh, by the way, they've won seven straight. They've covered six out of seven, and they've scored 30 or more in their last six games. They're also 3-0 and straight up ATS as a road favorite. Uh, Keon Coleman and Dalton Kincaid are questionable. Of course, they've been banged up for the last few weeks. So still not sure whether or not either one of them will be available. The, the, the super uh, edge rusher rookie, uh, Jared Verse, he injured his ankle on practice this week. So he's a little questionable. They definitely need Jared Verse in this one, that's for sure. All right. And then we got the primetime games, Chargers and Kansas City. You mentioned the Chiefs. And the Chiefs are a four-point favorite. Yet they are 0-6 ATS last six. Uh, they get Pacheco back last week. They're getting DJ Humphreys, the left tackle, back this week. So as you said, they're getting players back. Uh, they have beaten the Chargers six straight times. Uh, but the last six games they have played to, to each other in Arrowhead, the Chargers have actually won three of those six and covered four out of the six. But the Chargers are 0-4 ATS in the last four as a road dog. But they've only been in a spot once this year with their head coach, Jim Harbaugh. Lad McConkey is questionable. A lot of people thought at the beginning of the week he wasn't going to play, but keep in mind he has been in practice limited the last three practices, which is not bad. At least he hasn't missed practice. Chargers have won five out of six overall straight up ATS. Well, this is, uh, this is as big as it gets uh, for the AFC West. Well, you know, the same motivation that you're talking about with Philadelphia, with Detroit, Buffalo. with Buffalo, you're de dealing with here with Kansas City. Great head coach, great great uh, defensive coach, great quarterback, great players, offensive line with Humphrey's back is very strong. Pacheco is a big addition. This is a very, very low line compared to what you would think out of, you know, this is the Kansas City Chiefs going for a three-peat in the Super Bowl with Mahomes and and you have a banged-up Charger team. Now, uh, McConkey, if he's in or out, there's a big difference. He is their main target. And the efficiency of their quarterback, Herbert and, and McConkey, has been over 53% when they, when they target him. If he's in the, and he's healthy, and, and these are a lot of questions that we really can't answer. So... But if there's a question mark about it, this is a low line for the Chiefs against a division opponent, and they're in the race for that number one seed. They don't necessarily want to go to Buffalo either on a, if they have to go to a championship game. So this is a low number for me. I'd make the game six, and four is just a little too little. So wow. that's, that's why I'm leaning to – that's why I lean to the favorite. All right. And that's why I'm taking the charges because I actually thought the line should have been four, uh, right around that. Um, yeah, I think at this point they just they're not covering spreads. So I mean, uh, well, they also they also they also haven't been favored. They've been healthy. They've had the, Mahomes yeah. been, has been getting beat up because of the left sure. tackle being out. And I, I, still, left, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's still, like it's like it's like Trent Williams with the Niners. Sure. When he's out, that team doesn't win. No, it, it's that simple. It's not like Trent Williams, but it's 30% like. <laughs> but yeah, I think the thing is, is that here's here's the deal is that we all know they're going to get healthy. We just did a video on it, by the way, that's available on the channel where, where we mentioned and I had the interview with the Chiefs Insider of Charles Goldman of ADC Sports. And we talked about that, that, yeah, they're getting all these players back. Marquise Brown's next, Harrison Butker's next. But that I look at it as more as, 
I, I don't think that, well, all right, now all these players are back. Win, 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 win. I just think that by the end of the season, no matter how many games they win or lose between now and then, if all those players come back, they're just going to be a different team when the playoffs start. It's going to take some time for those injured players to kind of get acclimated with the team too. It doesn't just snap like that. So that's kind of why I think, but I, but you're absolutely right with the whole McConkey thing. It, it's going to be really tough for the Chargers without two of their best offensive players, Dobbins, of course, out that uh, they're going to be able to move the ball. So if anything, if you, if you, if you like the Chargers this week, you probably like the under, right? Oh, I've already, I've already bet the under actually I've also bet, the charger. As a matter of fact, I think Tony the other day was the team. I'm not sure if it was. I think it was Tony said he bet the. Uh, well, somebody did, and I'm not. I, I could be misquoting. He bet the Chargers under the team total, which I like as well. Oh, I mean the money line is uh, 180, by the way. But yeah, the team total one. I'm not sure who that was. It might have been. Yeah. It might have been Tony. Might have been. We have the short. Yeah. It, this, we, and we have uh, that's on the playbook show that we did, so you can check it out. Uh, it was uh, later in the show, so if you want to check it out or. I believe uh, it might have been in Tony's short. And if it is, then that short is available on Playbook Experts. And uh, there's a link in the description of this video how to check that out. All right, the Monday night game, Cincinnati and Dallas. And the Bengals are a five-and-a-half point favorite. I can't believe the Bengals are giving five-and-a-half to anybody with that defense. Uh, Dallas is two-to-one on the money line. And, and uh, yeah, the Bengals, though, are three and oh straight up and against the spread as a road favorite this year, including wins – of seven, 10, and 10 points. So when they go on the road as a favorite, that's been their most comfortable deal this season. And that's the role they're in here. The Cowboys have all of a sudden won their last two games straight up ATS. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, they are 0 and 4, straight up and against the spread as a home dog this year. Um, and their last four, because I'm not including the Baltimore game, but 0 and 4, straight up and against the spread, the last uh, four uh, as a home dog. Uh, um, and actually, if I say just the last three, I'm eliminating the Baltimore game. They have lost those by 115 to 25. They, 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 well, first of all, they're hurt. They got a lot of injuries, but Dak is out, of course. Their backup quarterback now is is in. They hadn't won a game at home until last week, and then they won. They won one. They're on a two game winning streak. The Bengals. I mean, I got to just say that this is a soft team. I mean, these the. the I don't know what the hell's going on with their defense, but their their defense is horrendous, absolutely horrendous. There's, a, I don't know how anybody cannot score 25, 28, 30 points against this defense. It's un, it's incredibly bad. Yeah. But their offense with Higgins and Chase and Brown and Burrow, who's having a fantastic year, he's a great, great quarterback. It, he's he gets 30 it like it's nothing so it's this is an over bet for me that's that's, Wait, what's, that's the, what's the number uh, well my, my computer just it's amazing that up. we're the number we would be even with, even with the backup quarterback and cooper rush no running game and uh it's probably a high number oh it's a very high number uh 49 49 and a half 49 and a half with that Dallas, that's going to be the highest number that the Dallas Cowboys will have all season uh, with uh, Cooper Rush in. So anyway, 49 and a half. Uh, Jim went with the over. Uh, and uh, C.D. Lamb, it does look like he's going to play. He's questionable, but it does look like he's going to play. I'm bet pretty, pretty, I'll predict the score here. 28-27. 20, Somebody well, wins. You want to score, too. 28-27. I'm, I'm just having fun. <laughs> Evan McPherson I've been, I've been plays kicker over. for the Bengals, who's missed some big kicks this season. Uh, he's out. Uh, so, hey, that's good. Maybe he can uh, point to his injury as an excuse. Uh, anyway, Cincinnati and Dallas will wrap up on Monday night. Unfortunately, it's a Monday night game, so they can't flex it. So, nothing you can do about it. We all have no, to watch the, it. There, there was something something about the Simpsons, and they couldn't, they couldn't move it. They wanted to move it. And they couldn't move it because of the Simpsons. I, I don't, yeah, know, I don't what know what that means. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, next week is week 15 in the NFL. And that means we're getting real close to the end of the regular season. So all these games are starting to get really big. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what's on top uh, next week for Sunday and Monday night. Do you? Do you know what those primetime games are next week? 
Uh, let's see. Um, no, I, re I really didn't look at All it. All right, that's okay. We'll talk about it on Monday. So check back again on Monday when Jim and I are going to recap everything that took place on Sunday and Sunday night and Thursday night. And then we're going to also maybe take a look ahead at the Monday night game. Probably not. We just did. Uh, so count on that. Uh, unless something happens, we'll update you injury-wise or anything like that. And then again, another big week ahead. we got a lot going on here on Pluraline TV. So it's going to be a fun week. We're going to take a look at the college football playoff bracket and give predictions and take a look at futures and all that kind of fun. And then, of course, don't I forget gotta, we ever – I got to say I got to say something about this college – this stuff. I mean, I haven't, you know, I haven't really been involved with speaking about this, but th this is so unfair with stuff that's going on with these these championship games where you have teams that almost would be to have an advantage of forfeiting the game yeah. to, in order to. I mean, this is yeah. ridiculous. These people, these suits that make these rules. You got Alabama over here, three three losses. They're going to put them in no matter what. They could have eight losses and they put them in because it's a cash deal. You know, if that, that, you know Alabama's in, it's big money. But they don't deserve to be in the playoffs. No. Come on, give me. Well, a I don't break. think Georgia deserves to go in if they lose on uh, on today. But they will. It's like automatic. Uh, Georgia could lose the SEC championship game. That'll give them three <laughs> losses. But it's Georgia. Matter of fact, we're even going to give them a home game because it's Georgia. I mean, come on. <laughs> But you know what? And I said this the other day. I really mean this. That's an advantage to 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 us because that means if Georgia and Alabama are in the playoffs, they're going to get inflated numbers. And I'm just going to go ahead and take advantage of it. I'll be betting the money line. Whoever whoever these teams play, I'm taking the money line against them because they're going to be inflated. Now they may not. I may not win it, but I think I'll have a good chance of winning it. Just like Georgia it's Tech at seven to one. But you're probably right about getting getting some mathematical advantage. There's yeah. no question. Yeah. So if you know that you got to look at it on the bright side somehow. At, you know, if you're a handicapper, at least. All right. So anyway, uh, that's next week. Should be a lot of fun, Jim. Appreciate it as always. It was fun. Good yeah. to see you. Thanks. Jim. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Everybody.